Sam from the Treehouse, and for this segment, I'm joined by my colleagues, Reggie and Teresa. So, Reggie, how are you feeling? You oh, I'm spotlight. feeling great. I'm feeling great. Uh, the spotlight was, as I said, direct to the point. The reaction by the fans has been fantastic. I mean, certainly Super Mario Odyssey and, and what we showed from that. Uh, the little snippet of Metroid Prime 4 had the fans <laughs> just tremendously excited. And, you know, it just it continues our overall message of how we approach E3 and what it is that we're trying to do. For us, it's all about showcasing content, typically content that's near in. So obviously we showed a little bit of ARMS, a little bit of Splatoon 2, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 coming later on this year. Uh, and then we also showed a couple little snippets of things that are coming a little bit further, uh, further along. But so far the reaction has been fantastic and it just continues, right? And that's why we're here on Treehouse Live, a little bit more in-depth view of the games and, uh, and so, so far so good. Right on. I know we're kind of in the calm before the storm right now. The floor still isn't open, so we can actually still see the carpet. It hasn't been packed with people yet. Um, you've had a chance to do some exploring around the booth. What do you think of uh, New Dog City come to life here at E3? You know, the booth is fantastic. You, the, the team that we have that works on the booth design and the look and the feel, uh, both from an NOA perspective as well as with the, the headquarter team at NCL, Every year they are outdoing themselves. Last year it was the takeover with Breath of the Wild. This year it's all about New Donk City and creating an environment for consumers to really go deep into the game. Uh, about half of the booth is all about uh, Super Mario Odyssey. The other half we're showcasing all of our other content, including third-party content. We're showing FIFA 18 uh, out on the floor. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a great booth, and as you say, this is the calm before the storm. Uh, just as I was coming in earlier, there are already thousands of people out there just waiting to come in. And yes. typically, when the doors open, it's like the running of the bulls, and they all come <laughs> crashing into our booth, so it's going to be fantastic. Nice. I remember last year we were down on the ground floor and you could actually feel the rumble in the ground when people started coming in. That's right. And it's uh, it's going to be fun. It's, it's going to be exciting. But again, you know, for us, the, uh, the spotlight was a focus on Nintendo Switch games. Um, what people don't understand is that as we construct our overall presence at E3, we're very thoughtful around what's the best way to show content. And so uh, Nintendo 3DS is going to play a key role here on Treehouse Live. Um, we've got content that we'll be showing today. We've got content that we'll be showing really throughout the, the three days that we're here. And it's important that the, the fans at home and our consumers understand that Nintendo 3DS is still a vibrant part of our business. Uh, obviously, with uh, Pokemon Ultra Sun, Pokemon Ultra Moon that was announced last week, that's going to be a fantastic holiday driver for us. Uh, we've got other great games coming. and. Uh, and you know, what people don't realize is that Nintendo 3DS was the only platform that grew last year uh, in 2016 versus 2015. The only one. That's pretty impressive. And uh, we've sold uh, 66 million uh, globally of Nintendo 3DS. Again, more than any other platform in this generation. People don't know that. Um, I've got my handy dandy new uh, 2DS XL and, and obviously in uh, continuing to showcase new hardware. You know, for us, it's all about continuing to drive that momentum. It's nice that the family keeps growing. And now yeah. we've got this adorable little member to add to it as well. It is exactly. really pretty. It is, it is really pretty, um, and it, uh, it really showcases great. I'm playing Metopia, right? <laughs> One of the fun things about my job is I get to play the games early. I'm playing Metopia. Uh, I've got Mies of Mr. Ayanuma, Mr. Miyamoto, Mr. <laughs> Koizumi is in there. And of course, I had to have Bill as the Dark Lord, uh, right? <laughs> So, um, so oh, I'm I'm Bill. really I'm really enjoying it on my uh, my new 2DS XL, and it's uh, it's fantastic. It's pretty sweet when you can play games and you're like, it's work. I, you know, I'm uh, doing this because I have to do this. Well, it's you know, so so, much fun. so funny story is I'm playing uh, uh, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild and putting in a lot of hours in that. I've got my family saying, so you know, you're doing this just for E3, right? You're doing this because you have to be able to show off and tell people you finished the game, blah blah blah. Yeah. And it's yes. like, no, I'm <laughs> I'm doing it because I enjoy it and I want to do it, and so it's uh, it's fantastic. I but, don't know. Using the work excuse might be a good way to get out of chores. Oh, you're like, sorry, honey, I I have to do this. Yeah. I have to keep playing. This no, it, does, it, it doesn't work that way. Oh. Doesn't work that way. It means I have to play early in the morning or late at night. So. 
But uh, and actually thinking of um, other things that we've got going on in the booth here, and just over the course of E3, um, we probably should touch a little bit on the tournament activity we've going on because right below absolutely. us, there's a pretty boss stage that has been yeah. constructed. Well, absolutely. And again, the the tournament activity is a key part of what we're doing here at E3. Three different tournaments, uh, starting off with Splatoon 2 later on today. Then we've got Pokémon Tournament DX. We've got Arms. Uh, hopefully, everyone saw how I humiliated Jeff Keeley playing Arms uh, <laughs> on on his show. But that game is going to really show well, I think, from the from the tournament scene standpoint. And for us, you know, supporting the tournament community and and really driving that uh, that part of our engagement with our fans is uh, is really important to us. So we're very excited to see how the three three tournaments play here at E3. Yeah, I think it's been really fun watching people play ARMS and especially watching high-level competitive players uh, get into the real meat on the bones of that game. And there's such a level of nuance to the strategy and the actual technical ability that uh, I've watched a few folks where they're uh, maybe pro Smash players or pro players for another uh, series. So they really are used to getting into the nitty gritty and into mm -hmm. the weeds of the mechanics. And you'll just see their eyes light up as they start playing ARMS. And it's, oh, I'm, I'm getting this. Well, this exactly. has got some, some interesting depth and flexibility to it. And and I mean, even within the office, watching who's been picking which characters as their mains and how we're gradually sort of growing as players as we're duking it out against one another. But it's, uh, it's been a real fun ride. It's, yeah. it's going to be exciting. I'm really excited to see how the, uh, how the players we have showcase that game, how they showcase Pokémon Tournament as well. I saw a little bit of the, uh, the, the, the pre-gaming going on, and that's going to be fantastic. So it's, uh, it's going to be very exciting for us. So uh, what else are, are you thinking as far as um, uh, some must-see titles that we got going on here? Because we've got a lot to cover. Well, we, we've, we've got a lot. I mean, you know, again, everything that we have on the floor here is showcasing and, and showing off fantastically well. Uh, I'm pleased to see the third-party support. The, we've got Rabbids on, uh, on our show floor. Ubisoft obviously has that game uh, in their area. That is really fun. Uh, I've been able to get my hands on that game. That is really fun to play. Um, so it's, uh, it's going to be very exciting. Uh, we've got uh, Fire Emblem Warriors here on, uh, on our booth. That game is showcasing well. Really, everything we have shows so well, and I'm really thrilled to see what we're doing with third party as well. And uh, if we can jump to this, I think uh, on this subject of cool titles, you've actually got something, a surprise for us maybe? I, I, have, <laughs> um, I have a nice little surprise, right? And uh, I said... Uh, when I was with Keeley, that literally within the first hour of Treehouse Live, we would be breaking news. And, and that is what Treehouse Live is going to be doing all through the next three days. So we have some news. We have a world premiere of a new game. This is a Nintendo 3DS game that will be launching later on this year. We're going to play for you the video uh, for, this, uh, for this new game. And then Teresa's going to demo it, and we've got the developers who are going to come talk about it as well. World premiere game announcement on Nintendo 3DS, just for you.
Well, surprise. <laughs> yes, I am so excited to actually talk about this game. Yes, Finally. welcome back, everyone, to Nintendo Treehouse Live at E3. Uh, I'm Audrey. I'm here with Teresa and mm. Tim. And we have two very special guests with us. We have Sakamoto-san, the legendary creator of the Metroid series, as well as Jose from Mercury Steam. So thank you so much for joining us today. And as we just saw, uh, we're going to take a look at Metroid Samus Returns. That's so right. we've waited long enough. Let's jump right into yeah, it. Yeah, let's jump right in yes. to the start. So for the people at home that aren't familiar with the Metroid franchise, this is um, Nintendo's premier exploration-based sci-fi action game. Uh, it features Samus Aran, who is a renowned bounty hunter, and she's been sent by the Galactic Federation to planet SR388 to investigate and annihilate the Metroids. She's the best at what she does. Oh yeah, she's super cool. Um, and this is actually a reimagination of the original Game Boy Classic that was released in 1991, uh, Metroid 2, Return of Samus. Um, and this game is just, it's beautiful. It's, it's a little bit shinier than the Game oh, Boy yes. version. <laughs> yes, it is. And it's, this game is still about discovery and exploration. You know, there's intense boss battles and there's, so many pathways to discover, and you can take your time through it. And, and this is really, this is classic 2D Metroid to a, a T. It's got the isolation, uh, the exploration, and of course, Samus just generally being amazing. Yeah, and the great thing about this being on, whoop, on the 3DS is that this there's so much detail in the background, and it's really heightened with the 3D feature on. And you can't see it at home right now, but it, it does feel really, really good. Yeah, it sounds cheesy, but it adds a lot of depth to the experience. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and something I want to actually show here on the show floor. So uh, in the past, Samus was able to aim at 45 degree angles, but now she has this whole range of motion, which really allows for precision here. It's really nice because especially as you get further into the game, there are enemies all over the place. So having the freedom to shoot anywhere you like is incredible. Yeah. So the free aim. Oh. So the free aim here is also really cool here where when I'm actually moving it and I actually have an enemy on site and target, it, the, the cue will, audio cue will change and also that it will highlight in red. So again, it allows for a little bit more precision here. Yeah, it's still up to you to aim precisely, but that nice visual indicator is just very helpful. Yeah. And Samus here has her very basic abilities and um, so as I keep exploring and, and seeing new environments, I'll hopefully gather new abilities to upgrade my suit. So this is another new ability that Samus has in this game, and it's a melee counter. And if I time it appropriately and immediately shoot, I, have a ver I do a critical hit on the enemy. But in the circumstance that I don't immediately shoot, I have some time to actually just shoot from afar and take, give, a, give myself a little bit more leeway to not get hit. Uh, the melee counter is a new ability, as you mentioned, and it's really great because this game gets challenging. Oh, yeah. It's very, very difficult. And um, since we have Sakamoto-san here, uh, while we're speaking about challenges, uh, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about some of the challenges you encountered while developing this game. はい。あの、ま、メトロイドに限ったことじゃないんですけれども、あの、ある程度確率された特にあの、今までのシリーズファンの方々が、ま、満足していただけて、それでいて刺激的っていうものをま、追加するのは非常に難易度が高いって思っていました。いや、そう、I あの、でも今回のサムスリターズではうまくいきました。But, you know,
<laughs> thanks to you. Yes, thanks to both of you. Yes. <laughs> and uh, as we were speaking, you actually got Samus's legendary morph ball ability. I did, and uh, this is very, very handy to get, as you can see, through certain tunnels here. Um, here's a save station, which I don't quite need right now. I'm going to keep on going and exploring this area. And here, there's, this is a pretty uh, bleak area from where I just was. And you'll see this gate here. Uh, this is a little different from the original game. Yeah, it, it definitely is. Um, and for people that haven't played the Metroid 2 in the past, this uh, purple liquid is actually very painful. And I'll just kind of... Yeah, don't... Oh, yep. she did it. Yeah. Ow. <laughs> yeah, so I can't really go down there, and I want to, and I can't really interact with this right now, so I'm going to keep on moving forward and see. And that's really, that's mm -hmm. the nature of this game, is you'll come across areas that you just can't survive in yet, you just can't get past, and you'll have to acquire new tools and abilities to be able to keep exploring and keep pushing forward. Exactly. So since I couldn't go through the door, I went up and around it. So I'm going to keep on moving forward, and... This is also um, a brand new feature to the Metroid franchise. These are Aeon abilities. Um, Aeon is a very mystical and powerful energy source, and they actually give abilities to Samus that are very different from the technical upgrades that she gets for her suit. So this one that I just gathered is called the Scan Pulse. And what it does is that, oh, uh, I should remind people that the Aeon abilities are actually not they're limited. You yes. can't just spam <laughs> them whenever you want to. Um, and so they'll have their own energy, and you'll have to gather um, uh, power-ups uh, power for them and also um, more energy in order to refill that tank. Um, so this just to showcase. This scan pulse. Yeah, so to showcase the scan pulse, if you see the bottom screen, the map usually kind of uh, e uh, d uh, explores once you start moving. But if I use the scan pulse, it'll actually open up this quadrant of map already for me. And also on the upper screen, it'll show these blocks that I can easily break. So now I know that, oh, there was an actual hidden path there. So And normally, you, you would just have to shoot everywhere to try and find breakable blocks. And you can still do it that way if you want to. But if you have the uh, Aeon to pull it off, the scan pulse is also very, very helpful. Yeah, keep in mind, though, that not everything can be easily um, broken with your laser. So you know that that's kind of some ammo that you'd have to waste. And it, it's. It's nice to actually have the Aeon ability to strategize about, you know, what, which one am I going to use? Am I going to use my ammo, or am I going to use um, the Aeon ability in order to keep on discovering and exploring? Absolutely. And, you know, throughout her long career, Samus has had a lot of unique abilities at her disposal. And as we've seen already, this game adds even more. So, Jose, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about the process you guys went through of adding new abilities like the melee counter or the Aeon abilities. Yes, well, from the beginning, Sakamoto-san wanted my Curious team to challenge ourselves to bring new ideas to the series. So we were given freedom to prototype a lot of different ideas and mechanics and see which ones would better fit within the Metroid universe. And once these ideas and mechanics were discovered, it was just a matter of iterating and policing the design. Oh, wonderful. They really add a lot to the experience, so good work. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> So here is an energy station, and I'm a little bit low, so I'm just going to take that. You it's always want to take advantage of those energy yeah. stations. Every little bit of health matters. Yeah, for sure. You'll notice that a beeping started. That's actually my Metroid detector, and it's telling me that there is a Metroid nearby. Um, again, for people that don't really know what Metroids are, they're an alien species that um, they're pretty dangerous and they suck up the life form of any alien species in order to survive. Yeah, you, you don't want to hug a Metroid necessarily. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Another thing I want to showcase here is actually the mapping system that this game has. So now that, um, in case I'm not able to go through a door because I don't have the ability to unlock it. Which happens okay. a lot. <laughs> yes. I have these pins now that I can just drop it onto the map and then that will kind of be my note for myself that, oh, I want to revisit this later once I grab an ability and maybe I can try it later. And as you mentioned, this game is so much about exploration and going back and trying to find every square inch of the map to find all of the many hidden secrets. So this pin system is actually very, very useful. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting close, but I'm going to go investigate your, this area. Your Metroid senses are still tingling, so <laughs> keep searching. 
He's getting closer because the beeping is getting a little bit more insistent. Oh, nice. Found a hidden missile tank. Yeah. But see, there was an example where I, I kind of knew already that those pass was there, but the, the scan pulse would have been very useful right there to kind of show those box. Here's another safe station. So, see, there we go. Sam Pulse told me that that block is breakable, but I can't shoot it. So I'm gonna try a missile instead. It's open. And that's a good point. If you ever run into an area you can't progress past, use all of your weapons and abilities. Yeah. Oh, it's a little friend. Hi, friend. That was a Metroid, but we're actually not fighting him. We're actually fighting his first evolution. And this is known the Alpha Metroid. He looks twice as friendly as a regular Metroid. So if I time it correctly, I can actually uh, melee counter him, and it gives me an advantage to actually hit him for more damage. Uh, you'll also see that he'll drop these little sparks. If I actually uh, hit those sparks, I'll get more replenish ammo replenishment. So in case I en end up using all of my missiles, I could always go around him and try to shoot those in order to get more missiles. Nice melee countering. And I'll say, I don't know how well the home audience can hear this, but the sound effects in this game are incredible. The music, the atmospheric sounds are just really great. So uh, Sakamoto-san, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about what into, went into the development of the soundtrack for this game. Ah, well, we have two of the composers who worked on Super Metroid on the team for Samus Returns. And, you know, and, and, and they've worked on pretty much every Metroid title since that time doing music for us. Um, and so I really don't have to say any, anything. They just go do what they do, and what they do is create great music. Excellent. Well, lock them up. Don't ever let them go. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. So you made quick work of that Alpha Metroid. Good work. I did. So I'm actually going to go return to that gate that I couldn't get to before and see what happens now. So I make my way there. So in the original Metroid 2, whenever you defeated a certain prerequisite number of Metroids, the ground would rumble and then you would know that you would be able to proceed to the next area. So now in this game, you have these gates. And if you press on it and you enter the Metroid DNA that you had just gathered from the Metroid you just killed, it will enter into this gate, unlock, reduce this hazardous liquid that was killing me before, <laughs> and now I'm able to get to the next area. It's really cool having this really visual cue of your progress in the game as well. Yeah, so now I'm gonna go to a, a later area in the game. And um, it, we've gotten a glimpse of it a little bit, but the 3DS hardware really goes a long way in bringing this world to life. It helps communicate the isolation of Samus being stuck on this alien planet. So um, Sakamoto-san, could you speak a little to how you uh, used the 3DS tech to bring this world to life and really reimagine it? に道の惑星サムスの so, yeah, I mean, I do think that with this title, of course, with Samus, the 3D, uh, the glasses free 3D, uh, the 3D effects are put to great use. It really does help build uh, the world that we're exploring. But I'd like to go ahead and ask Jose to talk a little bit about some of the more uh, technical aspects. Yes, it was very clear to us from the beginning that if we wanted to convey to the player 
the greatness of the inner depths of the planet and the past glory of the Chosso civilization, we had to, to provide a big sense of scale thanks to the depth uh, given by the 3DS capabilities. So we wanted to reflect this from early on in the development process, this scale, uh, through the first initial concept parts. Thank you so much. Oh, and you've gotten yourself in trouble, Teresa. Uh, <laughs> I always do. <laughs> I ran into his room and he didn't like me being here. Oh, you woke him up from a nap. Don't yeah. do that. But I'm stuck here until he gives me leave. <laughs> and now's not the time to play with it necessarily, but I wanted to point out that you also got your spider ball upgrade. That's right. And really I, also, handy. <laughs> I also got um, bombs here. So these are actually very handy for taking <laughs> him out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so while you... um play with your new friend. <laughs> um, uh, this is obviously a, an enemy from the original game, and that brings to mind the fact that uh, all of the enemies have actually been re redesigned for this version. So, Jose, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about what the process was for redesigning the enemies from the original game. Yes, we wanted to respect the visual design of the regular enemies as, as much as possible, um, but we had to adapt the attacks, movements, and behaviors so they could fit with our new gameplay. And without making them lose much of their original feel in the process. And as for the Metroids, they were the stars of the show, along with Samus in the original game. And this wanted also to be the, the same in our game. And they, well, they suffer a massive overhaul from the visuals of the original game and in their gameplay mechanics. And also, we wanted to clearly show the transition in their life on from one Metroid to another. And this is something that is very clearly reflected in the movements, behaviors, and, and attacks. Oh, thank you. And good work, Tree. <laughs> oh, thank you. So um, I can actually take the spider ball. And the spider ball is actually an ability here that's very, uh, very unique to Metroid 2. Um, but I'm actually going to do a very hard technique that <laughs> I am not doing very good right now. I swear I practiced this. <laughs> the bomb jump. Oh, no. All right, last Metroid try. fans have spent hours trying to get to the craziest places using bomb jump. Oh no. <laughs> but um, as you're trying to work your way around this map, that also brings me to the point that a lot of the maps have been redesigned for the Ooh. new system. So Jose, yes. can you speak a little to the process of redesigning the maps as well? Yeah, so we wanted to respect as much as possible the original layout of the original game because it has such a distinct structure within the Metroid series. And well, we wanted uh, to have a lot of uh, new settings or new things because we wanted to be felt also new. And we added lots of sections different from the original game because we wanted to accommodate all of our gameplay needs. And also, we wanted the game to be more, the exploration to be more dynamic and diverse than in the original game, introducing some classic abilities from other games in the series, but were, that were not present in the original game. And also, we added some new, of course, special abilities that are unique to this title. So the combination of both made us realize some very interesting situations regarding the world design for players to actively figure out their way forward in new ways. Thank you. Actually, before I take this elevator, I want to show this. This is also a new feature to Metroid Samus Returns, and it's a teleport station. This actually helps a lot with the mobility of the game, where instead of backtracking all the way through previous areas, you can actually use the teleport to quickly jump into a new area. And this actually really helps when you're trying to gather some items that you weren't able to in the past or explore new pathways that you weren't able to before. I'm not going to take it right now. I'm actually <laughs> going to go back and take this elevator to a new area. No, but you're right, it's such a huge uh, addition to the game, being able to more quickly get to the areas you've already been to and find all those juicy secrets yes. you weren't able to get at before. Well, because like gathering all these items, it, it actually rewards you in the end because it gets, it does get more it's difficult really as hard. you further <laughs> get into the planet. And the baddies do get really hard. Um, so you definitely want to get all those upgrades and the items, and it rewards you. But you can also choose not to if you want a challenge. So. I've visited previous lava rooms before, so I know that this red door looks a little bit dangerous, but I'm gonna go in anyway, <laughs> just to show. You're a rebel. <laughs> yeah, it hurts, yeah, I don't want that. Okay, oh. so 
Um, I'm going to actually use the scan pulse because I see there's something up there, and I'm pretty sure there's a pathway. But just to make sure, yeah. while you have the Aeon energy, might as well. There you go. Excellent. So we're going to go up here. I love how if you had just shot up above you, it, it would have looked like there wasn't anything to break. So yeah. it's actually good that you used your scan pulse right there. Yeah, I, I have gotten lost more than <laughs> once. Here's another suit upgrade. Oh, I love this. <laughs> It does feel really good, it's really nice. epic. I love how vibrant the colors are. It's just, this world is so Metroid, so beautifully yeah. Metroid. And it's just, again, it's really cool when the 3D feature is on because you get to see all the stuff that's happened in the background. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go in here. You know, Samus has her classic suit. Yeah, her various suit. So uh, I can't go here, so let's try going back to the way we came from. Whoops. Oh, that was close. That was close. That was very close. <laughs> I like to play it dangerously. <laughs> and now you can survive the very, yes. very hot So lava. we're going to explore this room now. And we could always go back and explore other lava rooms to see what we missed. I have to point out that this is all one planet, this is all SR388, but look how different the environments are. It's a big planet. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of different areas and, and a lot of variety. There's so much variety, yeah. And every every um, every area is just so colorful and uh -huh. unique on its own. So here I'm going to show a new Aeon ability called uh, Lightning Armor. And what it does, it gives this green glow to Samus, but also overcharges my melee and lets me go through enemies without taking much damage. But it does take away um, from my Aeon pool. And so I want to actually save it in case I need it later. Yeah, every time you get hit, it actually makes your Aeon gauge go down. So That's you can't right. just run foolishly through a group of enemies unless you want to feel a lot of pain. Yeah, <laughs> so here's another door that I'm unfortunately not able to get in through. So I'm going to do another pin here. But I'm also going to show here um, there's this information screen that will actually see, it will show different items that are shown in the map. And if you're not quite sure what that icon means, it'll actually tell you here. Um, and it'll actually unlock too once um, you've discovered it and you know how to interact with it. So definitely keep, keep an eye on these because these are actually really informative. It'll help you remember what you already know. Yeah. And uh, we've already seen a few new uh, Chozo artifacts, but that brings me to the question, uh, Sakamoto-san, can you tell us a little bit about the decision to integrate more Chozo artifacts into this version of the game? と、so, you know, this game is set on SR388, and it's a, a planet that was home to the Chozo civilization at one point, and so it, it saw the Chozo flourish, and it also saw them crumble. So this whole area has this historical background of being a place just sort of filled with, with lots of riddles. So that's why you see all of these, again, Chozo ruins that you mentioned throughout the, throughout the game. And I think if you, you know, get a chance to play uh, Samus Returns, you might find some of the answers to the riddles that the Chozo um, civilization left behind. What a tease he is. <laughs> <laughs> But it is possible that there may be some <laughs> new and more like intriguing riddles introduced through the game as well. Oh, fine, I guess everyone's just gonna have to wait and see. <laughs> 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 You've gotten yourself into trouble again. I did. <laughs> so this is the second evolution of the Metroid species. This is the Gamma. Um, I did. A, I was able to do a counter melee on him finally as he came up close to me. But I'm also going to use Ice Beam because it seems to be really weak to his nucleus. So I'm just going to keep on attacking him. But yeah, he's he's got a dynamic set of moves. He's swooping down on me. He's throwing electricity on me. But that's a good point. If you're ever fighting an enemy or a boss and 
your weapon of choice doesn't seem to be making a big dent, try and try one of your other weapons or abilities because right. they might be a little more successful. And oh, since I'm a little bit low on health, I'm going to feel safer if I put on my uh, lightning armor. So I'm just going to go here. <laughs> oh. Come on, buddy. You've made him mad. Yeah, he is not happy with me. I'm just going to throw this out there. Those spider legs are really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of spiders, so yeah, this guy creeps me out. Oh, he's turned red, though, so you're doing well. Yes. Almost I, there. I should be almost there. And that's another kind of visual indicator to show you that you're getting closer to making mincemeat of this guy. Yeah, and there's all those audio cues, too, for when when's the right time to, um, oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> when's the right time to melee him? So it only happens when he goes down on the ground. But yes, I was Got able to, to successfully kill him. Good work. <laughs> all right. Well. With that, I actually want to show another later area in the game because I think it'd be really cool to show the fans. So. Excellent. Let's do it. So while you switch to your other save file, uh, Sakamoto-san and Jose, uh, we were hoping you could tell us a little bit about how you went about balancing this game because there's obviously a lot of abilities and it must have been difficult to balance making them feel uh, useful to players without taking away from the challenge. まあ、well, of course, you know, uh, it's, it feels great. It's exhilarating to use these really powerful dy and dynamic abilities. And, you know, players want to use them, and we want them to use them, of course. But, you know, one of the things we have to be careful of is if we you know, overuse them if we make them too powerful. It reduces, you know, some of the tension that you feel in the game, and it sort of has the counter effect of actually reducing the excitement and sort of the, again, that, that thrill that we want players to, to feel. So, again, it's a, it's a really delicate balance. これのバランスと非常に難しくて、やはり消費量であるとか、その効果であるとか、その供給量、このバランスをうまく整えるのに非常にチューニングを繰り返しまして、マーキュリースチームさんにもいろいろとご迷惑をかけたんじゃないかな
But I'm gonna use a combination of abilities here from missile to grapple to beam burst. You really have to be on your game with this guy because he switches up his patterns a oh. lot. Oh, he does. He's hard to predict. Any, yeah, he's hard to predict and he totally aims for me too. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he's got me down. Nice. That's just a beautiful melee counter too. I love how it slows down time and it has that really cinematic presentation. Yes, it feels so epic and actiony, and I absolutely love it. And this is my least favorite move. <laughs> this one gets me every time. Oh god! Oh. Oh. And now you, you died on purpose so that we could yes, see zero suits down this high. She looks so elegant there. Beautiful, yes. <laughs> so <Sorry>. thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I, I aim to please. Yes. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try this again. Yes, you can do this. We all believe in you. <laughs> I'm going to skip the cutscene because I can. I'm going to, whoa, get right into that. All right. Wow. Nice melee counter yeah. right off the top. Oh, he was nice enough to give it to me, so <laughs> I'll take it. Yes. Oh, no. side so I got a good shot of his nucleus you know he's not invited to your birthday party anymore no he ruined it I I like green but <laughs> not in my face <laughs> no oh. and as the uh, we're showcasing here the new abilities uh, your beam burst there uh, your lightning armor they add to the experience, but as to the balance they were talking about earlier, they definitely don't make it easier. Uh, you have the ion gauge, and you can't spam these abilities at all. I mean, I think <laughs> you're yeah. already out of them, so. <laughs> oh, again. It's all right. Third he's, time's the charm. He's pretty strong, yeah. I'm, he's pretty awful. I'm hopeful that this third time I can get it. Yes. You have the power of Samus <laughs> at your disposal. I have all her abilities. All right, let's try this again. Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, oh, I missed him. He missed me at that time. <laughs> that was lucky. Oh. He's gonna feel that tomorrow. Hope so. <laughs> so mean. That was your favorite. Oh god, I absolutely hate this ability. <laughs> you know, he, he's more afraid of you than you are of him. Is Just that, remember that. Is that really That's the, case? the truth. <laughs> I don't think he cares much about me. <laughs> you have a handle on it, he switches it up. Oh, yeah, I know. I, I always need to be on guard with him because it's never the same pattern or consistent at all. You're getting really close, though. I think you can do this. Oh, I don't know. I got one bar left. <laughs> oh. oh. No. No. Oh, oh so, so close. close. <laughs> All right, I can do it. I can do this. I we swear. We believe in you. <laughs> this is the time. <laughs> and he's not going to do that move. That Maybe you hate over and over again. <laughs> Maybe Sakamoto-san can give me some tips. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> That's all I get. No pressure having the creator of Metroid watching you. No. <laughs> dynamic the beam burst looks. It is, it feels so good. Ah. 
fun. Oh. I ran out of Aeon energy. Ah, oh, that was my best one. Oh no. Got to do the old fashioned way now. Oof. Missiles it is. Oh, oh, that was close. Come at me. Come on. Just stay down. Yes. Oh, finished with the melee counter. That's beautiful. Yes. <laughs> well worth oh, the wait. <laughs> thank you. Good work, Jason. <laughs> Uh, well, that is all we have to show for game footage, but we do have some cool announcements to also show to the folks at home, so yes. I'm really excited. Shall we? Oh, we shall. <laughs> all right. So, uh, as you probably might have seen in the very beginning of the game, the surface area, uh, Amiibo functionality is active in this game. Um, it does support the two Samus, uh, the Zero Suit Samus and the regular Samus from the Super Smash Brothers line, but there's also two new amiibo that we're so excited to show you guys. So we actually have them right here. I'm going to ask you to hold. Actually, yes. no. I'm going to give you the honors Yay. of holding him because he's so awesome. My little friend. So you get the Metroid. And this is the best part. He's actually squishy. He actually feels like a Metroid. It's so cool. <laughs> and he's like breaking out of this little case and everything. Yep. And then you also have uh, Samus again here, but she's in her classic Metroid 2 pose, and that is just so, so cool. Like, the amount of detail that's around her, it's just, it's so amazing. She feels so cool. And so, yeah. these are going to be great additions to my collection, maybe your collection. Oh, yeah, definitely yes. my collection. <laughs> I'm a super big fan of Metroid. Yes. Um, so we, we can't, unfortunately, tell you what the functionality is in this segment, but we will announce it at a later time. Um, but we wanted to show you these because they're so, so cool. Yes. Um, yes. And uh, and uh, before we go, yeah. uh, we wanted to ask if uh, Sakamoto-san and Jose have any uh, final thoughts they'd like to tell our studio audience. Yes, I wanted to th uh, thank Sakamoto-san and Nintendo for relying on us uh, to develop this new Metroid game. So thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, we are very happy, of course, to have come, you know, been, uh, been lucky enough to, to team up with Mercury Steam on this project, and we really feel that the world, uh, the potential for the 2D uh, Metroid franchise has really just opened up for us a lot, so thank you so much. One other thing I'd like to talk about today. What is it? Yeah, so we've actually, we're going to launch and, and put, on, put on the market a special edition for Metroid Samus Returns. Oh, there so. it is. Oh, awesome. Oh, that's so pretty. So it also has on the cover the original pose from the Metroid 2, Return of Samus. So that, that's so cool. Yeah, and we've got a soundtrack there and reversible covers. So yeah, that's so pretty neat. the soundtrack is actually called Samus Archives. Um, it's a music CD and it has about, I think, 25, 25 tracks. Yeah. yeah, and it's just a collection of all the games that have come out uh, so far for the Metroid series featuring our beloved heroine, Samus, um, including this one. So uh, I hope you guys really, I I'm super excited for it, so I hope you guys are too, and it's, it's a really cool treat. Yes, thank you so much for uh, telling us about that, Sakamoto-san. Yes. Thank you, Jose. Thank you. All right. All right. So uh, I think later today we're going to have a trailer. Oh, that's right. So one more treat for you all. <laughs> um, so those of you that have a Nintendo 3DS at home, you're actually able to see the trailer that aired earlier today. And it actually, if because you have a Nintendo 3DS, if you're able to pr put on the 3D functionality, you'll be able to see that 3D depth and, dis and display, and you'll just be able to see how isolated and, and cool and all that depth that's in Metroid. So um, we're really excited to have that available for you today, um, and you could download it for free on the Nintendo eShop. Yes, and uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We were so happy to be able to yes. show you Metroid Samus Returns. Thank you again, Sakamoto-san and Jose, for thank joining you. us thank and speaking with us. And uh, please stay tuned. Next up, we have Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle.